Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Workman and what I'm going to do for you is do a couple of these sex linked pattern inheritance crosses. Um, I know we've done a few of these in class but what I'm going to do is take you all the way to the end here and work through these two problems which is number 11 and number 12 and uh, these are dihybrid crosses involving sex-linked patterns of inheritance and they're a little tricky so I think it's probably useful for uh, me to go through them with you. Uh, let me put a little bit more space between these two questions and uh, let me grab my pen here and uh, so I can make some notations and off we'll go. Alright, so let's um, read through this in humans color blindness is due to a sex linked recessive gene while blue eyes are due to an autosomal recessive gene okay so what that means is that part of this is sex linked and part of this is autosomal so part of the alleles are going to have x's and y's associated with them whereas the others they won't so what I'm going to do here is um, just make some allele notations right away color blindness is sex linked recessive so what I'm going to do is just make a note to myself that that's going to be an X with a lowercase b in superscript right after that um, so what that means then also uh, is X with a capital B would be the normal gene alright and so blue eyes are due to an autosomal recessive gene um, so I'm going to make blue eyes just lowercase b now brown eye looks like it's the uh, opposite form here so let me make a note there that's going to be a capital B alright <coughs> um, and so uh, let's see if we can figure this out two brown eyed people with normal vision produce a blue eyed color blind son what are the genotypes of the parents alright well let's figure this out first of all the son he's blue eyed so that means his genotype is homozygous recessive for blue and if he's colorblind, that means his genotype with his X and Ys would be looking like this, all right, if we're just talking about colorblindness. So, um, you know, taking from this particular situation, both parents uh, must have um, at least one lowercase b allele. All right. Now, the other thing to know is that they're brown-eyed. So, um, therefore, they must be heterozygous. For brown eyes, okay? Now, the thing we also need to under understand, too, is that sons get their X chromosomes from their moms. Which means that mom must be a carrier. All right? All right, now both parents are brown-eyed, normal vision. So to me, um, this means that mom, she's got to be, again, heterozygous. We already established that up here. She must be a carrier. All right, and then dad. Dad's also got to be heterozygous for brown. And he's a man, so he's going to have an X and Y chromosome. And the only way for him to have normal vision is if he has the normal allele on his X chromosome. Okay, so that's number 12. Excuse me, that's number 11. Number 12 is a little bit lengthy here, so bear with me now. Um, a blue-eyed woman whose father is colorblind all right, marries a brown-eyed man whose mother was blue-eyed. All right, now, what proportion of their sons would be blue-eyed and colorblind? This is tricky. Let's break this down a little bit. 
All right, let's talk about the woman first from the information from the problem. Okay? First of all, we know she has blue eyes. And going with the key that we made for number 11, we know that that means she's homozygous recessive in that uh, allele combination. Now, um, her father must be colorblind, all right, because that's indicated here, all right? Um, and so what that means she must be at least a carrier. Which means this is her genotype in terms of her X chromosome allele combination for color blindness. All right. So that means her genotype for both traits would be looking like this. Okay. That's her genotype. Now, we're going to need that later to figure out the second part of the question, what proportion of their sons would be blue-eyed and colorblind. So let's now talk about the man here in this scenario and understand that um, he has brown eyes. All right. But uh, he has a parent that was blue-eyed. Okay. His mom was blue-eyed. So that means little b, little b. Okay? So what does that mean? That means he must be heterozygous. If he's brown eyes, but his mom only had a little b allele or the recessive allele to give to him, he must be heterozygous. Okay? Now, um, it's not stated that he's colorblind. Okay? Um, so we're going to assume he's normal. So we're just going to write his allele combination for his sex chromosomes like this. So we'll go with this for his um, allele combinations. Okay, this is his genotype for these two situations. Now what we need to do here is a cross between these two genotypes, okay? This genotype is going to be crossed with this genotype. All right. So what I'm going to do here is write out their genotypes again. Okay. So we're going to do, um, here's the woman's genotype. And here's the man's genotype. And what we need, we need to do is figure out the alleles for their gametes, all right? So these are genotypes, and realize that genotypes are diploid. They're 2N. So when we consider the gamete possibilities, you've got to realize that they're haploid because gametes are cells that go through meiosis. So what that means is we've got to figure out how do we separate these alleles. Now, the gametes for the woman here are going to contain the lowercase b allele combined with the X chromosome that has the normal gene or potentially the lowercase b allele combined with the X chromosome that has the recessive allele. So those are the two gamete possibilities she can produce. Whereas the man, he's going to have a couple of uh, other possibilities. He could pass along the dominant allele for brown eyes or the recessive allele for blue eyes. And he can pass along to his offspring either his X chromosome, which has the normal gene for color blindness that we've assumed up here, or he could pass along his Y chromosome to his offspring. And these, those could be combined, all right? Now, the dominant blue-eyed allele could go with the X chromosome. The dominant blue-eyed allele could potentially be passed along in combination with the Y chromosome. Or the recessive allele could be passed along. The recessive blue eye allele could be passed along with the X chromosome to his offspring. Or the recessive allele could be passed along with the Y chromosome to his offspring. All right, so um, 
you know, another way to potentially figure this out is FOIL. You know, if this is our first, and this is our second, and this is our third, and this is our fourth, you can do um, the uh, first ones together. So like first, you could do the outer ones together, first and fourth, the inner ones together, or the last ones together. So that's really what we have here. We have first ones together, the outer ones together, the inner ones together, and the last ones together. You can FOIL a genotype to figure out the gamete possibilities. Okay? Just a quick tip there. Now what we're going to do here is set up a dihybrid. It's almost a dihybrid square uh, to see how these gametes could potentially recombine. So what we're going to do is put the uh, mom's gamete possibilities over here. And we're going to cross that with dads for potential gametes. Now his potential gametes are, oh, let me erase part of this line here. <coughs> his potential gametes are going to be up here. So let's recombine these guys. Now the thing you got to realize is that filling out a Punnett square is mimicking fertilization. So let's put the B's back with the B's and the X's back with the X's, as the case may be, or the Y's. And just so you understand what we're doing here, this B is here, this B is here, this X is here, and this X is here. So we're putting the, the alleles back together as they should be, all right? And here we keep going. Now, if we look back at the original question here, the original question, of course, was what proportion of their sons? And that's a key idea. Not what proportion of their children, but what proportion of their sons would be blue-eyed and colorblind. So let's look at this. This is not a son, so we don't need to consider that. She's not a son. These guys are sons. She's not a son. She's not a son. So out of these, these eight, four are boys, all right, which makes sense. But how many of these four are going to be blue-eyed and colorblind? Okay, so again, how many would be blue-eyed and how many colorblind? So what that is is um, one quarter of their sons are blue-eyed and colorblind. Now, if the question had been phrased slightly differently, what proportion of their children would be blue-eyed and colorblind? That would be um, one eighth because only this child is blue eyed and colorblind. <laughs>